So is democracy reborn here and in the United States as our leaders weak or are our leaders weak and shambolic? Joining me now are the Labour activist and blogger Emma Burnell, Isabel Hardman, editor of the Spectator's Coffeehouse blog, and in New York, Miriam Elder, foreign editor of the popular website BuzzFeed, which aims to give young people the news they'll want to know. Well, uh, I'm wondering, given your youthful consumers, whether you think they believe democracy is in play as Barack Obama telephones their Congress men and women over, over this 24-hour this period? Well, it's an interesting question you ask whether this shows democracy at play or a shambolic leadership. I don't really think the two things are, are mutually exclusive. Uh, there's widespread understanding here that this is a way for Obama to show that he's not George Bush, that he's not going to do this the way that uh, was done previously. However, the, the timeline in which he's done it, that's what's been criticized quite a bit. Maybe he should have done that before announcing, you know, unilaterally that he was thought that war was the right thing to do no matter what. Isabel Hardman, um, is this a shambles or a proud moment for democracy? I think it's a good moment for democracy in that voters feel more powerful. So we've seen a really interesting shift in the past week. MPs have shown that they're less interested in what their leader thinks or in their personal instincts and more interested in their constituents. Many of them were saying, I'll make up my mind once I've heard from my constituents, which is really, really interesting. But in terms of whether it's a good thing for democracy overall, well, actually, the defeat rested as much on chaos in the whip's office in the Conservative Party as it did in some sort of grand principle. Aren't you being a little generous to the MPs in the sense that they'd have to be deaf not to know that most people think the Iraq war and the Afghan adventure were both catastrophic? Well, yes, and it was interesting also because many MPs base their verdicts on emails they'd received from constituents, which isn't exactly a scientific poll. Obviously, the national polls show that the public mm. oppose action in Syria, but I'm not sure what a straw poll by email actually really tells you. Uh, Emma Bernal, you're a Labour activist. I mean, how do you, how do you read it? I think it's a combination of a win for democracy and a shambles, <laughs> uh, to be quite honest. I think Isabel's absolutely right about the fact that the Tory whipping machine is broken. Um, it, I, I don't know whether that's irreparable, but it's, it is certainly not working at the moment for the Conservative Party. Um, but it also meant that the voice of the people was heard in Parliament. And I think we've now got a constitutional precedent that... Mm things like this, you know, when decisions about going in and taking offensive action, not necessarily defensive if we were invaded, now have to have a vote in Parliament. And that's going to make that kind of decision much harder to make. And we'll need a much stronger case to be made. Uh, Miriam Elder, uh, people on uh, this side of the Atlantic, I'm sure yours too, are basking in the aftermath of House of Cards. Uh, and so they understand what whipping is all about. I mean, they understand uh, the whole business of uh, people being driven into lobbies, even if they don't really agree with the vote that they've got to cast. Uh, and I'm wondering, again, what do you think young people make of our political systems? Are they democratic? Do they reflect the people that have actually elected them? And does anybody under 30 really think they have any access whatever to the political consequence? Well, I think judging from the reaction on Twitter, for example, the day of the, of the discussion, the day of the vote, um, I noticed people just being really quite impressed with, with the whole process, that things were being debated so openly. Um, this was something that hadn't even been considered in the U.S. at that point. So the reaction that I saw mainly was people saying, wow, is this really happening over there, and kind of being impressed with it. And now you're seeing the interest in Syria grow more and more and more. I think that even maybe a week ago, young people didn't even really know that, uh, that something huge was going on there. It hasn't been as huge of, uh, of a thing in the U.S. as it should have been until now. That's very interesting. So you're saying that the, the, the vote in Britain really did get through to people, to the sort of young people who read your blogs and uh, activities on your website. I, again, judging by the reaction on Twitter, I just saw a lot of people saying, oh my goodness, is this happening, sharing the link, people watching the live stream that you wouldn't have expected to be watching. It, it definitely made an impression. Well, th th this is a rather dramatic moment because we think of America as a rather sort of isolated community. They, it has, and we've suspected Obama personally has been affected by this, uh, have been affected by the British vote. That, that, that is a cross-fertilisation of democracy. Well, it is, and it's also a bit of a boost for David Cameron, actually. I think Obama's announced... Well, he hasn't played it that way, has he? Well, he, no. He's gone around with a man with a, looking like a man with a hung head. He doesn't do, want to do any interviews or do anything exciting. Well, yes, he has gone into hiding, but I think yeah. it's... I'd come him... out and say, look <laughs> what I've done. I've lit democracy across the world. Get me on your show as... To... Mr Cameron, if you're watching, we want you here tomorrow night. Go for it. Well, I think he's been given this boost by Obama actually listening to what's happened in 
the British Parliament, which actually he could have said, oh, I don't want to go near that, but instead he said, I I've learned from that and I want to follow David Cameron's example. Although I have to say Obama's sort of showing David Cameron how to do it rather than rushing Parliament back into a vote and giving them limited evidence. That, Obama's that, well, that brings us to Mr Miliband. When, I think... Slightly sort of, um, well, what should I say? Oh, I know. Yes, great. Yes, well, we'll go that way. I think that, you know, Ed Miliband said, this is what we need to go to war. Here's an amendment that says, sets that out. Um, if you want to take us to war, you have to go through these The path routes. was slightly long and winding, wasn't it? The path was long and winding, but these are important decisions. They shouldn't be taken in a snap second. And there was no need to rush us into this vote. There was no need to mm. rush us to war. But let's quickly pick your brains on BuzzFeed. Uh, Obama wins, yes or no, next Monday. <laughs> oh, goodness, I think it's, it's really too soon to say the discussion is really just beginning. It's very split. There's no way to say. Miriam Elder, uh, Isabel Hardman and Emma Bunnell, thank you all of you very much. Interesting discussion.